Hi everyone, it's Mama Hen here with Blessed Hobby Farm. I've got another chicken Q&A for you. I've seen some questions on the internet. The most question I've been getting is, um, why have my chickens stopped laying eggs? Okay. So a chicken's reproductive system is influenced heavily by their environment. Cold weather, lack of lighting, even their feed. Um, sometimes if you're giving them the wrong kind of feed, they will stop laying eggs or slow way, way down. Um, pr uh, threats of predators, if you've been having a prolonged predator problem uh, that could stress the hens out, cause them to stop laying for a while. Um, the cold weather. So what I do with my chickens is I give them, I don't switch their feed, I add corn. I add cracked corn to their feed because usually during the summer I'll feed them laying crumble. I won't do the pellets because to me the pellets are harder for them to swallow, it gets stuck in their crawl, it just causes a big old mess and feeding them laying crumble is a lot better plus it keeps me from having to buy like oyster shells to clean out their crawls and everything with. So I feed them laying crumble in the summer and then in the winter I will add cracked corn. Now corn, chickens metabolize corn in a way that keeps them warm. So it's really not a, the best idea to feed them corn in the summertime because it makes them real hot. Uh, I have seen some people, they'll do the corn and the ice cubes, you know, kind of like a summer treat, which is okay, you know, a little bit in moderation like anything else. But um, feeding them corn long term, number one, they're not getting the protein. Because if you think about it, eggs are what? Mostly protein. So if the chicken is not getting any kind of protein, how are they gonna put the how are they gonna make the egg? How are they gonna produce that egg? So make sure that you're giving your chickens a very good mixture of protein and grains, especially in the winter time. Um, the corn, like I said, the corn is basically a treat. There's really very little nutritional value to it, but it helps to keep them warm. Um, that could inf that could influence the egg production. Uh, lighting. So I've seen people, they'll keep a light in their coop. I used to do the same thing, not knowing any better. Um, it's actually, it's not really a bad thing to keep a light in your coop if you wanna do that, but not having that extra lighting from the sun and putting an extra light in there keeps their cycles pretty well balanced they still think it's daytime and they still lay I honestly I don't know why the lighting has anything to do with it it just does but for myself personally I would rather take not not put the light in during the winter time and not during the night and let their bodies have that break that they need and it kind of helps them to live longer it gets more uh like another year's worth of egg production out of the hen if you allow them to have that rest um so but you know having a light in the coop is not necessarily a bad thing it's just you know if you're if you're in it for egg production definitely put a light in your coop um i wouldn't do a heat bulb especially if you're bedding is anything flammable like hay or straw or uh, wood shavings, anything like that. Just a regular light bulb will do the trick. Uh, stress. Now like most anything, if it's stressed out, it's not going to function properly just like us humans. So if you've had like a prolonged predator problem or you've changed your girls to a new coop or there's a new addition to, to the flock, maybe you've got another rooster or something, there's going to cause maybe a maybe a few days to a week delay in egg production due to the stress of the new situation. Uh, another question I've seen is how do I introduce new birds into the flock? My experience you do that at night um, especially if you're the type that doesn't have a light in your coop and it's dark. Um, I, after you have quarantined your new birds and I do suggest quarantining at least for a week at least a week if not two <laughs> Just to kind of make sure that there's no weirdness, no sickness, no nothing that your other flock can catch. But if you are introducing new birds into your flock, wait until nightfall. And then put the new birds in the coop with the old birds. Go ahead and set them on the roost or in a nesting box. Something where they're comfortable for the rest of the night. As weird as it sounds, when they all wake up in the morning, the new birds are with the old birds. And they, the old birds really don't know a difference. They just kind of go along with it. Sounds weird, but I've actually seen this work. They will, there's less pecking going on. Of course, there will be a pecking order, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, 
but you will see a lot less attacking, a lot less pecking, a lot less problems with introducing new birds to your flock. Putting them in at night, and then when they wake up in the morning, they're just kind of part of the flock. Another question I've seen is, why are my hens pecking on the little ones? Or why, are, why is there some pecking on some and not the others? And why is there hens showing dominance? There is a thing among the female chickens that that is called a pecking order basically you've got the one that she's the dominant one she's the strong one she's going to be queen bee and she's going to make sure that the others know that it's it's really no different than anything else in the animal kingdom uh, the, the strongest survives and the strongest is going to have her place with the rooster quicker than the others will um another reason for it is if a Bur if, if the flock senses that there is a sickness in one of the flock members or a disability or some, something that will slow the flock down or cause chaos in the flock, they're going to try to eliminate that one or they're going to try to banish it from the flock, I will say. Um, so basically, if you see that happening, just kind of pay attention to the one that's getting picked on. See if there's any issues that you need to resolve, any sicknesses that you need to take care of quarantine time all that stuff but the peck, pecking order is normal it will not go on forever just give it like a week um and they will they will take care of it they will establish their their territories another question i've seen is what is the best ratio hen per rooster my advice and what i do is no more than no less than five hens per rooster and no more than 10 hens per rooster the reason for that is you've got this rooster who has who's got the responsibility of all of these hens now roosters mate and if he only has like three or four hens he's going to go around mating them a lot and they're going to get uh feathers scraped off their back they're going to get injured they're going to get whatever there's not enough there's too much love to go around if you <laughs> and not enough places to put the love so um, I always say at least five hens per rooster, um, but definitely no more than 10 because you gotta consider this rooster is also protective of his flock. So he's gonna have to, when he calls his ladies to eat, he's got to make, he, ca he keeps count of who's his and what's his. He watches over his flock. If there is a predator, he's got to make sure that he's got all of his hens in safety so you don't want to put a lot of pressure on your rooster by giving him a flock of 20 hens and it's just him because uh, he will drop the ball <laughs> and last question but certainly not least for now uh, best chicken breeds for beginners my opinion you can't go wrong with the big breeds the standard the big standard breeds um, I do Orpingtons and Rhode Island Reds I have also in the past done uh, like barred rocks, white rocks. The bigger the hen and the bigger the rooster, the more docile. Um, I've seen people, in fact, I had one myself. It was a small rooster, one of the real, real small, skinny, well-built, had a really big, beautiful tail, mean as a striped snake. In fact, he uh, attacked my daughter for no reason no just because she was standing too close to him she attacked him uh the smaller breed of roosters tend to have uh gamey blood in them like game roosters like fighting roosters and so they're more aggressive they're more territorial and they're more liable to attack for no reason whatsoever the bigger breeds like the rhode island reds and the uh the Jersey Giants and the, um, I'm trying to think of, there's like a, a hundred of them now, but, uh, the Orpingtons, they're very docile. In fact, I can actually feed my rooster out of my hand. He doesn't bother a thing. Um, he, if he feels like I am threatening one of his hens, he will kind of come at me like, you know, what are you doing? Why are you, why is my hen crying or whatever? But he has never offered to attack. And any rooster that I've ever had that was those breeds has never offered to attack. So the bigger breed, the more docile. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you liked anything that you've heard here, or you've learned anything, give us your best chicken impression. 
pick that like and subscribe and follow buttons and share buttons and all them lovely buttons. It helps us out very much. And I will see you the next go around. Bye guys.